uh, year, years ago, this is before I had any kids of my own, uh, I was an uncle. Uh, I had um, I had some nieces, um, and, and they liked it when I would show up. I, I, I think I think nieces tend to like their uncles. Uh, um, you know, their little tails would be wagging as soon as I'd come in the house, you know, and they'd want to jump on me and ride on my back, and I'd give them spins and... And, you know, and then they went stories. So we got to read stories. And, uh, you, you know, to tell you the truth, I kind of hated reading those uh, storybooks. I, I didn't really mind reading the storybook. It's, it's just that I didn't really like reading the same storybook again and again and again. Uh, I, I got sick of Goodnight Moon. Um, there was this one storybook about a little girl with red hair. I, I just hated that little girl with red hair. So I went, I went on strike uh, finally. Um, Oh, well, for first, first, what I what I would do is, is I I would just sort of look at the pictures and I'd make up a different story, you know, kind of going along with the pictures. But but my niece, uh, she she figured that out mostly because like I would have trouble doing it again in exactly the same way, and she'd say, "No, you're not reading it right. You're not reading it right. That's not what you said yesterday." And so uh, finally, I said, "Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, we're not going to use any books. We're not going to use any books. We're going to we're just going to make up our own." own story. I think I think we can come up with a better story, a more exciting, a fun a story that's fun for you and 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 fun for me. It's not so damn boring. Uh, probably didn't say damn to my niece. She was she was only four. So uh, let me see. I figure uh, what do we got? A boy or a girl? A story about a boy or a girl? Of course, it's going to be a story about a little girl. She says and it looks just like her. And uh, and uh, says, well, what's the trouble? She's got to have some trouble, and she's mad at her family. Uh, she's mad at her mom, she's mad at her dad, you know, she has to make her bed, she doesn't like that, or her little sister stole her toys, you know, she just, Ugh. so she ran away from home, and uh, that's about as far as my niece got, and I said, well, well, you know, uh, outside the house was a deep, deep, dark forest, and nobody ever went into that forest, the kids were all told in that village, do not go into that dark forest, and you know why? Because people would go into that forest, and they would never come back, also, They'd hear noises, like stomping, grumbling, roaring kind of noises coming out of it. Sometimes the whole ground would kind of vibrate, and you know, to, no, no, don't go into the dark woods. Well, that's what she did. She was so mad. She was so mad at her family. She ran right into the dark woods. Ran, 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 ran. This was, you know, kind of scared and excited in my niece. Then, um, unfortunately, what happened is, you know, there's trees and creeks, and she turns, and she turns, and she turns, and pretty soon she realizes she's not really mad anymore, and, and, and but worse, worse, much worse than that, she's lost. She, she, she doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know, you know, she turns around in a circle, all the trees, and she has no idea how to get back home, and uh, she hears a kind of a, kind of a rumbling rumbling sound, trembling, and she thinks she should run from it, but then, you know, she's just kind of curious, what, what is that? So she, she kind of walks closer and closer to that sound, and all of a sudden she sees the edge of a mountain, an enormous brown mountain rising higher and higher and higher, but there's something very weird and strange about that mountain. My little niece goes, what is it, what is it? It's covered with hair, thick, dark, brown hair, a hairy mountain. Whoa. She starts climbing up the mountain. And this, I figured out a little interactive thing here. So I, I turn my, my fingers into the character, and I turn my little niece into the mountain. The hairy mountain. Well, it's not really hairy, but, you know. And I, I kind of walk my fingers up her. She's so ticklish. She just, you know, as soon as you get near her rib cage, ah! She's laughing and giggling. She just sort of loves this, you know. So she walks higher, higher, and you know what? She realizes it's not a mountain. It's not a mountain at all. You know what it is? What is it? What is it? It's a moose. It's a giant moose. Uh, that's because one of her favorite toys was this little stuffed brown moose. I thought she might like that. Well. That's where all those sounds from the forest come. That's the rumbling. The moose would get up and move around, and it was so big, it would just shake the ground. Uh, and that's why sometimes people didn't come back. They'd go into the woods, and the moose would just squash them, just step on them, not even, not even see them. And the moose was so, that's how big it was. So she climbs up the side of the moose is sleeping. That's where that rumbling noise is coming from. You know, it's just kind of making a little bit of snoring noise. <laughs> 
Oh, she, she, you know, my niece finds this funny. And now I'm, I'm, I'm walking my fingers up her neck. Oh, she's giggling and everything, you know. And, and they go right, right up here, you know. I'm getting, oh, the ear, the ear of the moose. And I'm wiggling my fingers around her ear. And she goes right into the ear. And then the little girl had an idea. You know what she did? She yelled. She yelled, wake up, you moose, wake up, you stupid moose. And my little niece is like, wake up, sleepyhead, wake up, sleepyhead. And the moose wakes up, the moose wakes up, but the, the little girl is right in his ear. He, he, you know, I'm an invisible monster, I'm an invisible monster. Wake up, you stupid moose, let's fight, come on, come on. So then I had a, I had a brilliant idea. I, I grabbed my niece and I flip her around on my back so she's like holding on to my back, you know, so her little head's like right over here. So she's pretending she's the little girl and I'm the giant moose now. And I'm up on my feet, you know, and she's yelling, wake up, you stupid moose, let's fight, you moose, come on, come on, so, and I'm spinning around, where is that, where are you, where are you, invisible monster, and, um, oh, she just loves that, my niece just adores this, we're twirling around and everything, and finally, I'm the giant moose, and I'm so tired and everything, and I collapse back into the sofa, you know, and she, she's right behind me, and I say, uh, I, I surrender, invisible monster. I, I don't know where you are. I can't. I can't find you. I. I'm so tired. I. I give up. I. I surrender. And, and uh, uh, whatever you want, whatever you want. Uh, and and uh, my niece is sort of thrilled. You know, she's like the boss of the giant moose now. You know, so. So I'm your slave. I'm your slave, invisible monster. I'll do whatever you want. And so, you know, I have to carry her around the house and she tells me where to go. And we go out in the kitchen, you know, she gets some wonderful cookies. And, and I'm, I'm always acting like, I, I can't see her. I don't know where she is. She's, you know, where is she? I keep turning around. I don't know where she is. So uh, finally, uh, the little girl says, um, uh, I'm going to go away now, giant moose, but pretty soon my servant is going to come and you must do everything my servant says or I will come back and kill you. My servant is a little girl, so keep your eyes open for a little girl. So, you know, my little niece comes off my back and she comes walking up. You know, she's my boss now. And I bow down to her and every, everything like that. And well, it's getting toward evening now, so the little girl figures she better go home. So the moose gives her a ride back to back to her village and back to her house. But the moose stays back in the woods, so the people in the village they heard the rumbles and things as the moose came a little closer. But uh, but they didn't really see the moose. He's down still back in the deep woods. So the little girl comes running out, and oh, well, her mom and dad are pretty darn mad. I mean, she's been gone all day. Where has she been? They're just really angry. They're bawling her out. She didn't even make her bed. Every her brother and her sister, everybody's yelling at her, bawling her out. Then all of a sudden there's screams, loud screams. And what, what's that? What's that? And so they quit yelling at the little girl and they run out of the house. And there's the whole village is out there and they're all looking up, 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 up. And it's the giant moose. The giant moose has come out of the woods. Everyone's terrified. The whole town's going to be destroyed by the horrible, scary giant moose. And the little girl just walks forward and she goes, hey, hey. Hey, uh, giant moose, you better bow down. And the giant moose bows down. I am your slave, little girl. And from then on, the little girl is the protector of the town. And, and the mom and the dad ask her for forgiveness. And her brother and sister love her. And she's just the most important person in town. And everyone lives uh, happily ever after. And the only thing really wrong with that story, which I think is excellent, and I, and I recommend you steal it from me if you, if you know any little girls. But the only thing bad about it is um, I, I had to tell that story again about a thousand times. <laughs>